All right, guys, we got a uh, 2003 uh, Range Rover, Land Rover Range Rover, 4.4, uh, 5 HP, 24 trans. Uh, this was towed in, uh, barely moves forward, reverse is okay. So we know we're looking at a clutch A problem. Uh, so we're going to open this thing up and see what we find. Uh, there's really not much we can do from the outside on this. This is the vent here. I'm just going to leave it right on so it goes on to the stator. Uh, the only thing we can do from the outside, I'm going to pull this clip out, which holds the harness. And this will just come right out, just like that. And then when we get to it, this will be able to push right in to get the valve body out. The harness is going to stay on the valve body. All right, so let's start by pulling the bell housing off. And those are 17 millimeter bolts. All right, you got your long and your short ones. You know, it's pretty obvious, of course, uh, where they go. Now we've got to separate the bell from the stator. But let's pull the drums out. Okay. And this, of course, the input shaft is the A drum. Let me just uh, back this up a little bit so we can get a full view. Okay. drum hub. Here's the A plus drum hub. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this uh, bearing. We got another bearing here. Now we're going to separate the two drums. Okay, get rid of this bearing it's on the back of the B. And this is your A drum. That's what it looks like. Blown apart as I figure what happened. Now the snap ring pretty much is out already. When the guy felt the problem, he immediately stopped and had the car towed. Uh, so not much 
a lot of times I'll try to keep going, keep going, and it'll, you know, all scrape in here, grind it all up, but this isn't that that bad. Uh, here is the uh, forward or the clutch A or the input, and of course they are going to be changed, but the steels look okay. So this is obviously the problem, and then what I'll do is I'll probably film opening the valve body or, or when it's already open uh, and we'll look at the pressure regulator uh, valve setup. Okay, here is the B drum. Okay, these uh, Frictions, they're, they're not that bad, but I can see some some burn marks on them, so we're going to change these as well. that seal the drum and then you got two uh, scarf cut rings uh, that fit inside the center support and seal inside the center support. Okay, let's get rid of the bells and we have some room. Okay, so here is the sticker. Here is the pump, uh, pump body and gears. I will open that actually in a little bit. Now let's get this pan off. Okay, so we have little T27 bolts here. And what I like to do is kind of just make sure, and yeah, these look like they'll probably loosen up pretty easy. Okay.
here is the pan. Now normally these uh, 5 HP 24s, you have four magnets, one on each corner. Uh, pan's not too bad, because like I said, this guy did stop when he told me. He said, I felt it, it didn't move forward that great. Right. That's it. I, I stopped, pulled the truck, and it brought over. P24s. Actually, on any ZF transmission that I do, uh, this filter actually is an aftermarket filter, and it's pretty matted down in here. Okay, any time that I do one of these ZF 5HP 24s, uh, 5HP 30s, 5HP 19s. I would only recommend using an OE filter. Uh, one main reason why I say that is because uh, I do a lot of work for a Jaguar dealership who also has this transmission in it. And I ordered some parts, uh, assuming I was getting an OE filter. Uh, I didn't honestly look at it. I put the thing in and I had a noise like the pump was starving for oil. So, and that's a classic sign of some things with the filter. So I call my supplier up and, and I questioned him, um, did you send me an OE filter? He claims he did. I said, well then there's a problem, send me another one. He sent me another one, I installed that filter. Um, put the oil back in, drove it, same problem. Uh, now I'm starting to wonder what's going on, so I had called uh, a buddy of mine that does a lot of uh, European stuff, but he is out uh, like in the Midwest, and I get him on the phone and he says, anywhere on the filter does it say made in Germany? So I look at the filters and it, and it did not say made in Germany. And he says, then you have an aftermarket filter. So that's the main reason, uh, one of the main reasons how I can tell if I have an OE filter on the black plastic part here, it would say made in Germany and a couple of engineering numbers and stuff, but just by looking at the way this filter is, this is all matted down and, and the mesh is much uh, thicker and it doesn't allow the oil to pass through like it normally should. But I'm surprised this guy didn't have an issue because the, the one time that I used an aftermarket filter when I thought it was OE, I had an issue with it. I mean, I couldn't even deliver the car was making so, so much noise. So, I, my recommendation on these ZX is only use uh, the OE filter. And even on the 6HP26s where the pan is plastic and it's integral with the filter, they do make aftermarket but I found that those pans do leak and I would never use an aftermarket pan. So on, on these high-end cars, I, I wouldn't recommend uh, using aftermarket stuff. I get original ZF kit for this, uh, the original frictions, and you use the right oil and you have no, no problems. Okay, here is your solenoids. Here is your output speed sensor. Here's your input speed sensor. Okay, so we're gonna take the output speed sensor. And by the way, the input and output speed sensors are the same, okay? That's pretty much what they look like. This thing's got a lot of crap on it. This one I can leave right in here for now because it's gonna stay in the valve body. So we're gonna take the valve body bolts out. Uh, the way you can tell which bolts come out so which bolts stay in that hold the valve body together is the, um, the head of the bolt is much larger than the one that uh, I guess would hold the two halves together. So we're going to take all of those out.
Okay, so it's just only two there. We got three here. Okay, so now we have Oh, got stuck there for a minute. Okay, so you know what? I don't really need this little extension. Okay, we got another one here. one. took this we took this clip out in the beginning so now what we're going to do is just push the connector through and everything is going to stay and here is that connector everything's going to stay right on the valve body the harness stays uh, these 5 HP 24 solenoids um, are usually very good they don't have many problems at all The 6HP26 solenoids, on the other hand, are, are troublesome, and, and I send those out to be uh, flow checked. Okay, here is a bracket holding a couple of feed tubes down. Take that out. And this tube goes into the center support. I'll get that out of the way. Okay, now we have a couple of small springs, snap rings, and uh, the seals that we got to get out. So let me get my. Let me just get set up for that. I want to get rid of some of this oil. Okay, so we're going to take these little snap rings out. These just pretty much keep tension on the uh, seals. You know, they all have different setups on some of them. The seal would stick up and the valve body would hold pressure on it, but these are small seals. And these is the, that's the spring. And this is the little clip here. So we don't want to lose those. Okay, and there's another one, same thing, both the same. All 
right now. These things sometimes are a little tricky to get out. So I try to like thread a bolt in there and pull it. That didn't work. Let me just face this towards me for a sec. Okay, that's the seal here. That's what it looks like, little. And I thread this in there and uh, pull the seal out. Okay, there's one more. Okay, same thing. That came right out. There's the. Okay, so we have we have the two out or loose. We have the two uh, seals out. Now we're gonna get the snap ring out, and then we should be able to slide slide the uh, uh, set of support out and. snap ring and this one actually it's uh, looks like it's beveled on both sides so this really can go in either way These things are on guides, so this thing has to pretty much be straight to come out. actually these are the guides one on each side they sit here and then it goes into the case and these also sit into the case here and here so it's a pretty pretty tight fit and it, you know comes out perfectly straight it'll come right out but if it gets cocked a little bit you got to wiggle it these two. Here is the center support. You got a clutch on each side. We'll open it shortly. Here's the uh, sun gear. Here's the planet set. Here is a, uh, this is a, a cover. And this goes on just like that. That's for the uh, the hub for the uh, frictions. Okay, here's another planet. Okay, so you know what we're gonna do first? Swing this around, take it 
take this cover off. This is actually the four wheel drive adapter cover. It has your rear seal and a bearing and race. That's what it looks like. The two wheel drives just have a regular tail with a flange on it. I had taken this four bolts, I had taken the bolts out already. Uh, and here is, uh, this is going to be your park gear, this will come out now, and your exciter ring to read the output speed sensor. Okay. Alright, this is your, this is your park. This reads the exciter ring on the uh, output speed. pliers. That snap ring is there probably so the piece can't move too far out of place. Okay, here is the snap ring. Now this will come out. Now it's still not coming out because I've got to take the o-ring off the shaft. I forgot to do that. Okay, this O-ring goes right before the splines and it seals in here to keep the oil from passing through onto the splines and possibly leaking. Okay, so this is the rear planet. All right, now we have the F-clutch drum. We have the F-clutch drum, and there's uh, T40 uh, that are in here, and pretty much the way to get these things out is you have to use the shocker to get them at least loose, because you don't want to really strip these things out, because that'll be uh, uh, trouble. All right, so let me get my uh, let me get my tool here. Might need a small extension, not sure. Okay, so, got my T40 socket. Actually, I don't need an extension. And then I keep some pressure on it. And loosens right up. All right, I just like to break these loose this way. Loosens right up. And then we can just use the regular, you know, you can get out my speed handle, you can, you're gonna use my uh, uh, little 12 volt gun. sell them. I know Ericsson's in Connecticut is a ZF distributor and, and they sell them. I actually keep a couple on hand just in case even though you're using the shocker uh, sometimes you know if the bolt is really tight your tool will break or the thing will strip out. So 
let's lay this down. Okay. Now let's get the out. All right, this is the up close drum. This is reverse. So this is going to have a snap ring in it. Okay, take the snap ring out. This is going to be the uh, sprig. All right, this will turn one way, lock the other. And let's check out the frictions here for the F clutch. They don't look too bad, but I usually, uh, these things do, one thing I've noticed with these, with these frictions on this particular one, see these actually look good, I mean to me they look good, but that doesn't mean they're not worn, and it seemed like there was a little bit too much clearance in these, so I'm probably going to change these, because uh, even though they do look good, that, that uh, doesn't mean they're not worn out. do is I'm just going to pause it. Uh, I have to go over to the foot press. These are split rings and I want to take the piston out and show you the piston. Okay, here are the, uh, these are the, the split rings for that, uh, that hold the bell bell down on the uh, F clutch drum. You want to uh, examine these, uh, look at them real close, make sure they're good. Uh, sometimes these uh, often do have to be changed. I keep a set of these in stock as well, and I get them from the same company. Here is the uh, Belleville spring for the return spring, and here is the piston. Now, this piston actually is in good shape. But a very common problem, this is a bonded piston, a very common problem with these pistons are the bonding comes off and you lose reverse. I mean, pretty much the two main problems with this 5HP24 transmission is either you got a problem going forward or you got a problem going backwards. That's really about it. I mean, other than that, these things are, are uh, pretty well made other than uh, the valve body you know, wearing, but there is a second design regulator valve. Um, and this bonded piston, the bonding comes apart and you lose, you lose reverse. Not too many other problems that I've seen other than that. So this is the planet set. This comes off. This is the hub. You got a washer here, which is a bearing raise. Okay, so let's take apart. All right, so here is the center support. You got another bearing, open face, goes right there. Uh, you know, one thing I did want to mention, I believe it's this one. You got a race in here. This is the hub for the B clutch. You got a race in here. And then this bearing sits just like that. You know, and it goes on the C drum. This bearing fails, fails a lot. Uh, so you want to pay close attention to this particular bearing. The race is in here, and this is the outer end. You know, kind of sits like that. But this particular bearing, you want to pay close attention to because there's a high, very high fa failure rate. Okay, so these frictions. For the center support. Yeah, they don't look too bad, but they're not the greatest. I do see some burn marks on them.
pretty much the same thing. It looks like I may be uh, possibly getting a banner kit uh, for this. Okay, now in this center support, there is a sleeve here with two O-rings. So you want to make sure you very carefully knock the sleeve out because you would have to change the O-ring. Okay, that's what it looks like here. Seals the center support. That's that. Okay. That goes here. Put that there. This is the C clutch drum. Frictions in the C drum are the same as the A. Okay, these uh, look pretty good. Here is another bearing that goes on the back of the drum here. Okay, so let's just open up this uh, planet. And we'll open up the pump. Actually, let's open up the pump. Okay, so this is the vent here, so we're just going to leave this alone. All right, so the pump, I'm going to leave the stator. I'm going to take all the bolts around the outside. So you got all these around here, and you got the little one right in here. All right, so let's take those out. Those, I believe, are, I think they are 30. Oh, they are 27. 27. This thing fits tight on here. Okay. Take them out once again. Okay. Okay, here is your pump. You have a lineup pin that will come out, so you want to be careful not to lose that. Here's your pump plate. And here's your body and gears. Okay, now I like to put these things back as they come out. You have two dimple marks, one on each gear. They face you. So we'll take the gears out. All right, we're going to check the pocket. Everything looks good. It, it usually is. And instead of a, um, a bushing, this has a bearing. And also the front seal. Uh, we're going to be changing, and that actually, before you can knock the front seal out, there's actually a snap ring in here that you have to take out before the front seal can come out. And then when you knock the front seal out, there's, um, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just go ahead and knock the front seal out and show you what's going on with that. So I'll just put this aside. Let's get this stator back, and I want to get this volume valve. Rid of some of this oil again. Give me one sec. All right. All right so now I'm going to add a stator 
this is um, like the pump volume or the um, uh, call it a flow control valve. Let's take that out. Thought it was a 17, it was not. Probably a 19. I can just rid my socket. Okay. So here is the uh, bolt for that, and then you have a sleeve. This actually uh, sits on that side. This, the ones with the prong sticking out, sit over the little dimple on the bolt. And then you have the spring. This is also a spring seat. Spring sits like that. And let's get the valve out. So this whole setup would go like this when it's sitting in the pump. That's what it would look like. Okay, so we're going to put this aside. All right, and that is the stator. This is your breather. I just leave this right in here. There's two rings. They come in the kit. They're going to be changed. Let me just take apart this uh, planet set. Okay, let's move this. Okay, this is the F clutch. I know I've been calling this the uh, center support, and uh, um, technically this is the uh, uh, this side here with the sleeve is the D, and this side is the E. I actually just thought about that. Okay, so we're going to take this back ring out. I'm going to pull first out the ring gear. Okay, there's the ring gear. And then we pull out the planet. Here's another planet. Okay, here is the sun gear. Put it back the way it came out. It would be just like this. And then there's another snap ring. Okay, here's that one. I'm going to pull out this planet. Okay. And this thing will sit on there like that. And then you have your empty ring gear here. Okay, so let me just take this uh, this out so I can kind of show you uh, what you got to look for. Bunch of crud on here. Just want to clean it off. All right, let's see if I can get the snap ring out. Here is the snap ring for that holds the uh, front seal in. All right, so let me see if I can get this front seal out. Sometimes you can just push the thing. All right, so we're gonna hit it out from the inside. Now there's like a spacer in here, you want to be careful not to damage it. I'll show you what I'm talking about as soon as the field comes out. It's a metal plate seal. Alright, that, that didn't come out that time. Let's try this again. Because there's that spacer, I'm trying not to ruin that spacer. really be 
being stubborn. Here's the spring for the seal. I think it is moving. I know, let me just go turn those lights back on. Wow. Okay. Let me just get this light back on. spacers right below this and I'm afraid I don't want to bend it. Okay. Alright, well that's what's left of the front seal. And this is that spacer that I'm talking about. There's a bearing in there and then this spacer here goes right in here. And then the front seal would go on, and then the sap ring would go in. But I gotta clean this up a little bit. There's a whole bunch of crud and stuff. That's why it really wouldn't come out. <clears throat> All right, so you wanna be careful of this. And <clears throat> I press the seal in, like with a bushing driver and a press machine, just so I can get it just below the mark, uh, and then put the sap ring in. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else. Uh, the valve body, I'm probably gonna. I'm doing a series on uh, on valve body tips. Uh, I honestly don't know. Well, let me get the valve body over here, but I don't know offhand the solenoids by heart. But all the solenoids are in a row. Like I said, output sensor, input speed sensor, um, which are both the same. Um, this is the lower front portion of the valve body that is going to be addressed because of the clutch A drum uh, breaking as it did. So when I have this apart, I'll probably uh, do a valve body. I'm doing a series on valve body tips. You know, as you uh, overhaul the transmissions. Um, things you can do, uh, updates you can do, or what you have to watch out for, or critical parts. And I guess that's about it for this one. This is uh, again, 2003 Land Rover Range Rover. The transmission is a 5HP24. Uh, did not move forward. We had found this forward drum Bust it up. And I guess that's about it for this one. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any uh, questions or comments, you can leave them below. And I thank you for watching once again. And have a great day. We'll see you next one.